in that they once had. You'll give it to them. Yeah, I have. The, I'm good. I'm good. But they don't have the backing. Even Schumer has become like a Palestinian. Chuck Schumer, Jewish, always strong for Israel. He's become like a Palestinian. Called for. As Donald Trump. Interview with Sean Hannity saying that the Israeli lobby isn't as powerful as it was before. And we'll get to more of that. We have more video. But he says that Chuck Schumer, a Jewish man, is a Palestinian because he's not supportive enough of the idea for something. So first of all, being Palestinian is now an insult that you can apply to a person. It's not a it's not an identification of the geographic area that a person was born in or whatever. It's now an insult that you throw at people. And while he is, he's played, he's dabbled with him being the one who gets to declare if Jewish people are sufficiently Jewish. He's done that for years. Yeah. If you vote for a Democrat, you're not really a Jewish person. Now, on a specific issue, if you disagree with him or if you disagree with Netanyahu, you don't get to be Jewish anymore. You, you don't even get to be American anymore. You become Palestinian. So for the many citizens of Israel that don't agree with Benjamin Netanyahu, you guys are Palestinian, according to Donald Trump. It seems sick to me, Francesca. What do you make of it? Um, it absolutely is sick. It's absolutely a slur in his mind. It's in in lockstep with people like Senator Tom Cotton saying things like all the little Gazas in universities around this country, basically like you know. Uh, as if that's a bad thing, uh, little Gazas that basically deserve um, to be bombed, that have their little terrorist cells of people who don't want genocide. But I think this is deeper. I mean, Netanyahu and the Israeli right, and I would argue the Zionist project more broadly, um, is about uh, calling anyone who doesn't support them full-throatedly not Jewish, including Jews. So if you're Jewish and you criticize what the state of Israel does, Suddenly, you're actually a self-hating Jew. You're not Jewish. I'm gonna actually look into your background. Are you really Jewish? I'm going to tear you down and smear you. And it just shows that this is not even about, this is not about Judaism. And anti-Zionist Jews have been crying this from the rooftop since the beginning of, of, of all of this, is that this government does not represent me and my faith. In fact, it is right wing and the likes of Donald Trump using Palestinian as a slur and trying to wheel Jewishness in the face of progressive Jews around the world is absolutely a clue. It is the hallmark of what this nation does, which actually is anti-Semitism itself. Hey, I'm glad you're here. Listen, in order for the damage report to keep on going, we need viewers like you to become a member on YouTube. Can you click the join button on YouTube today? Thank you. I'm not Jewish, I don't speak for Jewish people. You can Jewish individual Jewish people can decide whether they find it to be offensive or not or whatever. But like I imagine other versions of that being applied to different groups and I can't imagine anyone liking a person like Trump believing that he's the guy that gets to decide. But anyway, um, it gets worse actually, here's more. So number one, they have to finish the job. Israel has to finish that job. They have to finish it quickly, strongly, and they have to get back to life again because it's taking too long. They have to finish the job. You're saying go in, win, and finish. Got to win. Got to win. The attack on October seventh, and it's getting more and more demeaned. They're demeaning it. I have people now telling me they don't think the attack ever happened. <sighs> and take a look. You watch. The news reports. I have the where 50 people minutes that are of video. Sure, I know you're doing so do I. But here's the thing: you watch these people on television, and then as just like you have Holocaust deniers, also they say the Holocaust never took. It's the exact same people. They're saying it never happened. AOC plus three. You know, Israel was the most powerful lobby in the country 15 years ago. Today, between Talib and AOC and all of these people, what they're doing, uh, Israel, they don't have the backing that they once had. Okay, so a couple things. First of all, there was a weird cut in the middle of that. We didn't add that. Fox interviews of Trump now just feature random unexplained cuts, apparently designed to protect Donald Trump from things that he said. So just get used to that now. Uh, also, he, he implied that AOC plus Three, one of the worst designations he's come up with, basically the squad, uh, are denying that October 7th happened. That is a sociopathic smear. That is a massive lie. Honestly, they should sue. They should literally sue because that is insane. They have not done that. They've never done that. That is utterly insane. 
but also like there's so much in that. The Can I just point out though briefly point like out away. On, on that point of people denying that October 7th happened. Notice that he said initially in that sentence, I'm hearing people who say October 7th never happened. Now the way he entered that was almost like those people like are people he knows, are people who are like on the ground. Almost like, you know, people like Nick Fuentes or Candace Owens and these people yeah. also Deny the Holocaust. Yeah, we know. We know they're your followers. They are Nick Fuentes and Candace Owens. Like it, he didn't start off smearing AOC. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. He got but to it. it yeah, sounded like he was sort of like in the air. People are denying it even happened. Like the Holocaust. Like we know it's the anti Semites who love you. <laughs> but yes, to smear the AOC plus three, John. I read it a little bit differently. And this whole APAC is the victim. I see it as they're running scared, man. APAC is putting twenty million dollars to try and defeat Jamal Bowman in New York. They are scared to death of the squad actually trying to advocate for what? For ceasefire. Yeah, yeah, meanwhile, uh, those two guys are like, no, just finish it. Just finish it and get back to life. Well, those of you who are still alive after the finishing, I guess, but the the people that would die aren't really people anyway. They're just an insult I use. Um, but like, honestly, I, I don't really expect any more from Donald Trump. I don't think that he can be reached. So I'm gonna turn my attention to Sean Hannity just briefly, cause Sean Hannity was there. And when Trump said that, he said, yeah, Get in there and win. And I have, I have a challenge for Sean Hannity. Feel free to send him this video. I know that he likes challenges. He did um, MMA once, and I know that because he's never stopped talking about it. So Sean Hannity, here's a little challenge for you. What I want you to do is I want you to get yourself powerful flashlight, one, like one of those mag lights, you know, the things that can be used for self-defense by blinding someone. And I want you to unzip your pants, and I want oh. you to look down into your tidy whities and I want you to <laughs> get the biggest beam of light. So you have the best chance possible of finding at least one ball in there. <laughs> Why don't you say what you actually effing mean? Get in there and win. Get in there and win? What are they playing foosball? What do you mean when you say that? What will getting in there and winning actually look like? You are fine with tens of thousands of civilians. Men, women, and children, the elderly, grandmas, infants being blown apart. Then have the ball to say it. I know you'll never reach two, but maybe if you look hard enough, you ship things around, you can find one testicle so that you actually like say the sociopathic things that you believe. That's my challenge to Sean Hannity. Like no disrespect to survivors of testicular cancer. I feel like they they have uh, more strength. In that it's one a ball. metaphor. It's not a no, physical thing. But it's a know, metaphor that I'll probably I, get in I trouble for. No, you I'm won't. mad, I apologize. I love a good mag light in the pants. I mean, that's very important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I will, yeah, uh, look, we just saw uh, leaked text messages from Eric Prince, again, former Blackwater mercenary head, brother to Betsy DeVos. And in that chat, uh, the worst group chat ever, uh, they talk about, um, someone says, why don't we just napalm the tunnels in Gaza? Remember, tunnels in Gaza were also used for medicine, um, for food, for things that were denied the Palestinian people of Gaza because of the blockade that has been in place uh, since 2017, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. But it's like there are shades here, right? Republicans, absolutely, when they want it to be done, they're like, yeah, just drop a nuke. Forget yeah. about the radiation that will immediately blow into Israel itself. This 100%. is a very small amount of land we're talking about. But like John, they Israel just dropped a bomb on a UN school and killed 45 people yesterday. What do they want? Like how much faster can you go? I think the IDF is going pretty damn fast. Yeah, I look, we, we know what they want. Again, yeah, they're they're calling for Weapons of mass destruction abuse. They're calling for. By the way, they're getting what they want. You get it. You're getting exactly what you want on the right. An Israeli airstrike early today hit a UN school complex in central Gaza. That was a shelter for thousands of displaced Palestinians who are fleeing the fact that everywhere else has already been destroyed. Dozens of people were killed in just that. The IDF said the attack had targeted Hamas operatives. Palestinian officials said it had killed civilians. We have a big pile, you can't see it on camera. It's a big pile of oops. We're just gonna take this one and put it on top of the big pile of oops from the IDF. Oops, we killed the aid workers. Oops, we did it again. We killed dozens of civilians. Oops, 
Hope they finish the job soon. Mm -hmm. Anyway, again, apologies for some of the things I said. It is, I don't like seeing a billionaire talk to a millionaire about how people who have nothing aren't being killed fast enough. Okay, you don't have to apologize. I'm sorry. I never, I never pull pull the uh, your offending blank group on you, John, because I offend everyone. Um, all I all I was thinking was like, damn, I don't think Sean Hannity would have the temerity. Like he has no, just, even in it, even in he gets like twenty five million dollars a year. Yeah, to do I this mean, to advocate for mass murder and to not even again have whatever the intestinal fortitude to say that's what he's doing. He is a cowardly fascist. He's a cowardly advocate for genocide. When he gets clowned on that, all the time by Trump, though, that's the best thing about Hannity is mm -hmm. like if he's not in perfect lockstep, Trump will. Because there's also a point where Trump gets a little bit like it's uncomfortable to have people up his butt like that much. Hundred percent, yeah. So he starts to like shake them off sometimes, and it's always fun when he does. Because then Sean, he's like, "I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, <laughs> I won't do yeah, it." Yeah, no, again. honestly, look, we we can advance my metaphor to help Sean Hannity out a little bit. What you do is when you're done searching down there, you take the mag light and you just leave it in your pants. That way, you can pretend to have some confidence the next time that Donald Trump cucks you to your face. <laughs> See, I'm trying to be helpful. I want to. I, I want this program to be a place of solutions.